Welcome back, friends, to another Large Family Meals of the Week where I am going to share with you all this food that I'm cooking up and serving up for my large family of 11. I look like a, a rogue farmer mama Indiana Jones wannabe anyway that's what I feel like this morning it is raining out and so even though it's raining it was my gardening day I wanted to spend a lot of time in the garden so we're still gonna do that it's actually it's not raining now but I definitely don't have to water the garden this morning because we have had like four to six hours of solid rain overnight I'm still gonna get out there and plant potatoes in the dirt Let's get going with breakfast stuff. So I got lots of little critters over here playing. I have some squash, store-bought, of course, that needs to, I mean, not forever though. Open that, we're growing our own. And I have some freeze-dried dried squash on the counter behind me. But anyway, this is about five squash that need to be used. And so I'm going to saute them up in some butter this morning. I don't know that they, We'll all be eating at breakfast. There's only two of us here at the moment that would eat this out of uh, the 11 folks. Three are gone on a trip. So a few of those would also be squash eaters, but the, these need to be eaten. So I'm going to saute these up. It might be some olive meal prep or it might be gone all at breakfast time. I don't know what I'll get into when I'm cutting in here. My plan for today is to use so my home can ground beef again and get us some sloppy joes going in the slow cooker again. It has been since we went to the beach that we've had that and everybody always loves that. This is a little extra slimy. Let's see if I can wash it. Um, anyway, I just know I'm gonna be outside working in the rain or after rain <laughs> situation it's gonna be a slippery day like this squash haha -ha. and so getting something going this morning in the slow cooker is definitely my best bet shoulda coulda woulda got a bigger cutting board but that's no. okay we're gonna make it work And the good news is, with farm animals, none of these scraps go to waste. So there's the squash and now I am going to use some store-bought eggs and this is not breakfast for 11 this will be one two three four breakfast for five probably this morning but I had some store-bought eggs from some other recipe development slash cooking projects that mama does and so I want to get these used up too but we do have eggs from our chickens as well this is just some bacon grease I use this to cook with just like butter depending on what I'm cooking, but it's real good for eggs. And it saves on butter. Alrighty, so here's our scary bear ha ha looking breakfast plates for the younger folk. And there's my mama breakfast plate. So here's our home canned ground beef that we're gonna get going in the slow cooker to do sloppy joes with. Also, I've gone back and forth. Do I share this? Do I not share this? 
tell, tell me what you think. Hold on, I gotta get this microwave where it's gonna keep, keep an eye. I'm going to make these sloppy joes and we're gonna have a little mama talk. Okay, I am feeling super grumpy and super hormonal. <laughs> How about you, mama? Oh, by the way, so I'm just gonna eyeball, I'm sprinkling some monk fruit on this. Um, the way I used to make sloppy joes would be with, I would put brown sugar in it. There is, uh, by Swerve, there is a brown sugar alternative that is not made with real sugar that I don't have any right now. So I'll just use monk fruit and then I just squirt a bunch of ketchup and a bunch of mustard in here and then if i add anything else later we'll we'll determine that later i made sloppy joes with a lot of ingredients and very little ingredients and i like this three ingredient way and my kids can't really tell the difference don't worry one day this will be our own homegrown ketchup now i have and you can hold on i did have my spoon my spoon is here. Um, I have added tomato paste and onion powder and garlic powder and many other things, but this is just what I'm getting started with today. I think I probably should actually add some tomato paste in here so it's not all purely ketchup. Anyway, I made it with these three ingredients on vacation and they were delicious. So I told you, everything feels wrong, nothing feels right. I think I have a couple factors going on. Number one, I had birthday cake last night and I have not been having real sugar, but I did have a lot of real sugar last night. And this was the first morning that I went to bed nice and early. I did get eight hours sleep, but I did get up at five this morning because I'm working on getting my work time, my laptop work time for my projects going on in the mornings. What other life factors do I have? I went and saw a cow yesterday. She was a Jersey and she was supposed to be mid-size. And if you're into cow height, <laughs> um, you know, mid-size would put her at the most around the 48 inch range. I believe mid-size is like 42 to 48 inches. Um, she was not, she was every bit of 62 inches. <laughs> so that's why I got rid of our last cow, we sold her at auction um, because, so uh, maybe I'm sad over a cow. I was, I was just getting excited about this cow that we saw and I was up on my, cause she was in milk. She'd already had one baby. She was ready for AI to go again for another one. And I was just getting so excited about the possibility of having another dairy animal on our little farm here, getting going with that. And uh, again, she was just, we, we have the room, um, but I don't want to handle a cow that big until I grow in my cow experience. I would really like, wouldn't we all? I'd love a mini Jersey and I'm looking, they're very hard to find. If I could just get a mid-size one, I would feel good in that. Okay, so that was a disappointment. And you know, a lot of these things can get back to, you know, the chemicals in our body. I'm sure I had a lot of endorphins being released yesterday when I was listening to my cow videos and working on, you know, putting the right milk pans in my Amazon cart and getting excited, um, thinking about cheese making and those, all of those skills I would love to grow in. Um, and I could have got that cow. And Travis was already being a team player and helping me figure out, you know, exactly where we put her and adding electric fencing to a different fenced area. Um, she was already trained to where her owners on her current property would take her around. And she's basically like tied like a dog on a leash. Like she could be moved from tree to tree to help mow different parts of their yard. She really was great. And I did let the owner know later last evening that I just decided I, I wasn't gonna get her because I, you know, I didn't want to come spend an hour on her farm, talk to her, visit her cow, and not let her know. So I did let her know, um, and it's just purely her size. So I feel like a grown up having made that choice because you know, so many times I just jump out and do what I want to do. But yeah, so I'm dealing with some disappointment for that because 
Again, looking for the cow that I probably need is a needle in a haystack. So if any of you have any mini Jersey cows or mid-sized minis or leads on any, let me know. <laughs> but okay, so there's that. And while you're listening to my mama woes, doing mama talk it out therapy with me, I appreciate it. I'm gonna turn this back to you and help you with some stuff, okay? But let me just, I'm telling you what I'm dealing with. Um, so I had sugar, so I'm disappointed about a cow. Also, this morning, I, when I got up early, I was working on my Business Mama course, and boy, I have a lot done with that. I'm just at like kind of a roadblock with it. I have so many videos done, so many modules done. I just want it to, to serve my, my future students to the best of my ability, and this morning, um, I've been dealing with a lot of imposter syndrome and maybe I don't know how to make money on the internet, <laughs> you know, even though I've been doing it for 12 years. And um, a lot of, of what I share also has to do with the family management and the scheduling and all the configuration. You know, it's not, it's different. If there's a creator online who doesn't have kids, doesn't have anyone at home, and they can just be a creator full-time every day, right? Well, there's one schedule. But when you're a mom, when you've got a lot of kids, when you're potentially homeschooling also, pardon my ketchup bottle, uh, there's a lot to juggle. And even with my husband being home full-time for a decade now, there's still a whole lot that we juggle. So anyway, I did not have a work morning where I felt super productive, like I got a lot of really good things done. I had a work morning where I felt like I hit a roadblock and I'm just kind of stuck for at the moment. So Jamerel had sugar, Jamerel's disappointed about a cow, Jamerel probably has hormonal stuff going on because of said sugar. I don't think I took my vitamins last night. Um, I'm frustrated, frustrated at work. And I even told Travis, I'm like, I just feel like everything is wrong. So thanks for listening. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do, okay? I'm going to make the best of it because, so when I get like this, which I will get like this from time to time, and I share this too because it's hard online to, to share all the depth and the dimension of what's really going on and what I'm dealing with and what other creators are dealing with and everything. And so that's why I wanted to say, hey, you're seeing me make this food today, but I just kind of feel all messed up and out of sorts. And I want to use that to help you. So what I am doing when I get like this, which I will from time to time, is I have to remind myself, well, first off, if that's not true, it's not true, Jay Morrell. Everything is not all messed up and falling apart. It's, it's okay. Because if I feel like everything is wrong, <laughs> then that is a lie. That is not true. Everything is not wrong. We can count our blessings, right? And so what I'm going to work on for the rest of today, well, number one, I'm going to get my rear end outside and I'm gonna work in the garden for several hours because that is good for me. And I'm going to think on the Bible verse again and again and again. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And whenever I get in a funk or messed up in any way, I have a couple verses that I cling to. I've shared with you before Exodus 14:14. 14, 14, the Lord will fight for me and I shall hold my peace and remain at rest. We had just a, a tremendously hard season. Early in our marriage, years ago, a move was involved a lot. A lot of stuff was going on. And the Lord really gave me that verse during that time. And it got me through, I tell you, like two or three years. Going through nursing school, two young children, you know, just all of that. Um, and then being a young mom at home with a lot of kids and homeschooling, even before I was doing all of this, it was just very much, this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. So I'm just gonna declare that over my day, and I'm going to think on these things, and I'm going to not, because I feel like 
curling up in a ball, crying, and watching movies, and not being productive. And there's a time for that. Sometimes that's just what you need to do. But today I'm choosing, choosing joy. I'm choosing to get outside and get these potatoes planted in the ground. The ground is nice and soft. We're gonna accomplish some things. And I'm gonna think on this Bible verse again and again and again. And I'm also gonna make sure, I'm gonna stay off social media for the rest of the day and maybe even a couple days. And of course, part of what I do is tangled up in social media, but I don't have to check in every day. I do have many days where I don't check in at all, but I feel like the last couple days I've probably been checking in on Instagram too much. So that's just another thing that I can do to make the best of it. So I hope, hope that helps you, Mama, if you're having a squished up day, just not feeling quite right. Think about some of the things that are happening you know, like for my example, you know, I know I had sugar. Well, that's a kick, kick to my body. Um, and I know I have some other factors going on and I know everything is not really wrong. And I know that everything is not really messed up. And I think if I can have a good day where I work hard, get a lot of exercise outside, take my vitamins, drink my water, drink my tea, and keep my mind focused on, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I think everything's gonna feel better by tomorrow. We'll see, let's see if it does. Mm -hmm. So here we go, we got Sloppy Joe's in the slow cooker. No, Travis has not gotten to these lights. This could be another thing I could be sad about today, but I won't be. I need him on the tractor outside helping me today. It's on his list. We'll get there when we get there, but dinner is done. Let's get outside now. Okay, so so gourmet lunchtime now. I am using leftover hot dog buns. This is by request for little Subway sub sandwiches that my five-year-old calls them. And so we have some turkey and some cheese. Mommy. And we are oh boy. And we are making our little sub sandwiches. And I have been working outside working on a whole new lasagna garden area and that has been good for my mama's soul and so it's yes meet you want a little piece of meat while you wait and we have a mommy, mommy, little two-year-old here you go give you that little two-year-old that's ready for a nap and so we were gonna have lunch and get the two-year-old cleaned up for his nap time and continue on with the afternoon you want a piece of cheese too while you wait? You're having a deconstructed sandwich, there you go. So I will just take this cheese and fold it in half. Okay, and we are even saving a plate. We have some birthday napkins left over from this weekend. So we are just gonna eat it on a napkin. <laughs> whoops, 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 well, wait a minute. Our cheese is jumping ship. Okay, there we go. So how do you know when one of the toasters is turned up to six? <laughs> it could be uh, one of those memes. We, we don't know, but there will be clues. So yes, of course, we can read the labels. So I was toasting some bread here. I guess I didn't push that one down. And this one, whew, that'll be chicken bread. I was toasting this. We don't have any hamburger buns for the Sloppy Joes. Oh, by the way, happy evening. I'm happy to report that after four or five hours in the garden, in the rain, we got the whole new lasagna garden going. I'll tell you all about that, but I'm happy to report that I feel so much better. Travis, do you know that I feel better now? Awesome. Awesome. Because <laughs> he had to sit down and listen when I wasn't feeling better this morning. So we're all better now. So yes, lots of good garden therapy today. We got what was is our pumpkin patch area completely done. Travis used the tractor, we got the compost on it. So good, feels great to get that going. And then I started on my three sisters, I'm loosely calling it that because I'm sure I'm not doing it 100% perfect or correct, but I am attempting the three sisters method where you plant the corn and then you come back once the corn is about six inches tall is what I was reading then you plant the pole beans and then once those get going then you plant squash underneath now I've read about pumpkins underneath too but 
in and out, in and out of different articles that I read about it. So I, I think, well, I don't, I don't have to decide right now. We will do something like a vining squash underneath, potentially. But I have enough room, so I'm doing three long rows like this, but I have basically where I would have had a fourth row. I'm still going to do pumpkin, but I'm going to make sure that my pumpkin runners go out, out of the garden because part of what I was reading is the pumpkin doesn't always go so well with the corn. It can be overwhelming for a couple different factors. So I still want to do pumpkins, but I'm just going to shoot them all out. Shoot them out that way. I know you can see which way my hand is going. So Here's where all the corn situation's going. And then over here, this is where all the pumpkins. We're gonna train them in the way that they should go, haha. -ha. These toasters are way too high. See, I like them on three, but when the kids get doing bagels and such, they will put them on six so that they don't have to put them down a second time, potentially, depending on who the person is and how they like their bagels. Look at this, this great value bread. We are going to get off the great value bread here soon. I'm using up what we have. Oh, let's turn this down. Okay. So here's how, yeah, Friendly's okay, honey. My cat is at my feet telling me he's never been fed before, so. He's okay, anyway, Slappy Joe's cooked up. Very yummy. As I was saying earlier, I could have easily have used tomato paste and some other things in it, but they are delicious this way too. And I actually have some of these keto buns left from this weekend, and so I'm having my Sloppy Joes on those. And this is some of my squash left over from breakfast. It is six million degrees, but I'm going to have that with my Sloppy Joes. And then for the kids, we also have a whole box of pears that need to be eaten, so you're gonna be seeing a lot of pears coming up. Mm -hmm. Good morning, brand new day. So I always thought eating oatmeal on toast. For years, Travis did that, and I was like, doing did your grandma do that trap anyway I was just asking him now Tobin's saying grandma <laughs> he said we always did it all of us did it so I don't know where the eaten oatmeal on toast originated but I just had my oatmeal it was sweetened with monk fruit I had it on Ezekiel bread which for my THM ladies probably way too many it's supposed to be like 45 healthy carbs right and low fat when you're doing an e-meal already too deep in that this was probably more than that, but I'm, I'm not worried about it. I'm just, I talk about all the food, right? But that's what I felt like my body needed this morning. Now I'm actually not finishing all the oatmeal though, but I've really been wanting oatmeal on some kind of toast. So today, food wise, what's the plan? Well, I did get a bunch of gardening done yesterday. I shared that with you. I will show you today what I've been working on when I get back. I am gonna put makeup on, but this is as far as Farmer Mama is getting, as far as getting ready to go. I do have to take someone to a doctor's appointment this morning. We'll be out for a bit, gotta run through the bank. Gotta do some errands, right? So I'm re-wearing the minimal wardrobe, re-wearing the same shirt I wore. Did I wear this yesterday or I wore it to bed? I don't know. Anyway, re-wearing clothes. So we have that slow cooker full of Sloppy Joes and family of 11 we are down three people this week math so that's eight people and then one of those is out working all day today but they did have sloppy joes last night so not quite feeding as many as normal as usual so lunch and dinner is probably going to be sloppy joes in various forms i do have that whole case of pears that I wanna have brought upstairs today so we can really get working through all of those pears. I was going to freeze dry them. I don't think that's gonna happen now. They are ready and they are delicious. So I think we will just ha eat heavy pears for several days. And I have mango that is done in the freeze dryer that also at some point today we need to seal up. And then tonight, I don't remember if it's 7 p.m. Eastern time or 8 p.m. Eastern time, I have a live call with my membership and coming on with me is my friend Katie from Cast Iron Cooking. She has a YouTube channel over here too. She has a beautiful blog, beautiful pictures, Cast Iron Cooking expert. So she is gonna come on and we're gonna do a live call for about an hour or so, just diving deep in all the Cast Iron Cooking goodies with my Large Family Table community members. And so between getting back from the doctor's appointment, I really should, thank you for helping me plan my day, I really should try to get 
the mango bagged up or jarred up before and then several hours outside and then at least dust myself off before my live call. And that's what is happening today. Oh, also, mm -hmm. my older kids that are here, like I said, two, two of them are gone with my mom this week. But my middle school, high school kids were on our light summer fun schedule, but they will still be doing their reading and their writing and math activities this afternoon. They are independent on that. They can bring it to me if they need to. But my younger kids are having everybody grab a kitten, go to the tree house, play in the forest. Lots of summer fun and nature learning. And I do have some that have said they want to help me plant potatoes. So if we get to that today, I'll have helpers. Oh, and YouTube mom life. Uh, this is from a Nerf gun that's been going around. Anyway, YouTube mom life, eating breakfast, drinking coffee, watching a video on 1.5 times speed to get this up today too. So that's a little working mom action that's also going down. Mm -hmm. So we're back, we're working down the pair. Swallow. <laughs> I did get, when I came home, I had an order of pelleted seeds from Johnny's Seed Company. I never ordered from them before. Now, one thing I didn't know, and one of you have told, had told me this, you know, so many of my seeds, of course, first off, I am rolling through so many seeds. I don't know how many seeds we're going to have left at the end of this season. It looked like a lot, but we're just getting started, and I plan to succession plant and all that. But... Someone had told me that with the pelleted seeds, you can't, they, they don't save to the next season. They have to be used this year. So, okay, carrots. Got all kinds of variety of carrots. But when I open the box, I feel like this is like a medication order. Uh, but this is a yellow bunch carrot right here. And then this is resist mildew resistant basil and more basil let's see was this a different breed variety oh i picked up the carrots again okay this is romaine lettuce this is green butter lettuce what else do we have here those pears are delicious you're right this is a glow stick sunrise mix of carrots this is a hybrid of carrots. We have asparagus, green cabbage, red cabbage, and a butterhead lettuce. So this is my pelleted seed order. And okay, fine. We will just use all these this year, right? Makes sense to me. I'm glad you like that pear, honey. It's good, isn't it? And this is nice. Little bit of info on the lettuce. Hmm. Very nice. I love all of it. So, in other news, morning appointment led to some more appointments, led to being out half the day. It's a little after three right now, but two of my younger boys eat some more around the top, honey, where it's kind of fat. We're eating down pears. Um, my five-year-old and my eight-year-old and I are gonna go to our local farm store because I need a few smaller chicken waterers. I just put my meat bird ladies out on grass today. They won't be out there all the time, but they're gonna be out there for several hours and their waterer in their brooding house is way too big for my little movable chicken house that I have them in. And those kind of adventures, so we're just gonna run out real quick. Thankfully, this store is really close to our house and it won't be like going to the city for half the day. So as you see, we have some egg salad in the works this afternoon by a very capable human. Also, my other human that I was out today with appointments with, we got the cool wraps with side salads and unsweetened tea that we added stevia to on our way out to appointments. I still got my trunk up. Good morning, it's coffee o'clock. So last night I had a live call with my membership and dinner was very much had a big kid, heat up the sloppy joes, 
make some toast to put those sandwiches on, kids eating haphazardly, and then me going live over in the Large Family Table community for over an hour with my friend Katie from Cast Iron Recipes. And we had a whole hour heavy cast iron Q&A live chat with all the members, and so that was a lot of fun. So that's where dinner went last night. This morning, I think it'll be eggs. I mean, is that a shock, farm life eggs? We have some beautiful eggs there looking at us. I think we'll do some eggs this morning. Always a favorite. I'm feeling like this evening is going to be one of my slow cooker freezer meals that we'll bring up here. I'm doing a few more quiet mama morning. The house isn't moving yet. It's nice and foggy outside few more mama moments and then I'm going to do farm chores and in the process of coming back upstairs after the farm chores I will bring a slow cooker freezer meal up here for us. I don't have anything defrosted. I will be doing some cold water defrost method on it for a little bit. We will get that going and I do plan. Yesterday my day got run over but I mean that lightly. Mama life. My day very much turned into errands and family things all day, which is totally fine. Today, there is no outside running for me. That is good. After we do our morning things this morning, we will be able to spend the rest of the day outside and get a bunch more stuff planted in the garden. I'll show you how lovely things look outside. It's just, hear the birds. Lovely, misty morning. Got an owl in the background, don't we? So it's supposed to be 81 today, which hot, yes, we've had so much rain. The ground should be very nice to work in today. All right, so I've got three eggs and also some cottage cheese from the um, Nancy's Probiotic line of cottage cheeses. Those pickled eggs are still looking at us. We're gonna try those at some point today too. So here's the remnants of my planting corn the other night. It was pouring down rain and I really wanted to get corn in. I did not get too far. We made some progress. I'll show you how far we got. This is how things are looking today. It's, um, let's see, what time is it? It's two o'clock in the afternoon. So lots of sun here, which again is good for living in the woods. This is how everything else is looking. Oh my goodness, we have, the kids will be so excited. It just caught my eye now, I think. Has it rotted? No. Now someone on here told me I have to pick the first couple strawberries. But uh, uh, as she was saying, I need to pick them. Pick them while they're green so they'll grow bigger like at the store. The first couple times, but I didn't do that. But those are a pretty good size. Can I just let the rest of them go? These are the first red strawberries. I should have more excitement in my voice, but I'm hot. <laughs> first red strawberries we have ever had. As I like to say, I'm proud of us. So lots of beans and things coming up all around here. Someone was just telling me today I need to cut off the tops of my onions there or garlic whichever those are I need to cut them off because with the flour the energy is going to go to the flour and not to the bulb so I need to go to a quick Google University with that a lot of you have been asking what this is so this is mullen and I heard about mullen a lot during 2020 I had got some from Azure last year this is probably maybe not the right spot for it although it's not shading anything i was thinking the other day i would have to transplant this but it is blooming it is beautiful and so it's made to use a lot of teas as far as homeopathic remedies for all things respiratory and so i got two plants last year and i had heard it's the second year i harvest it and basically i could harvest these flowers now and many of these leaves again based on my reading uh, and I was thinking of putting them through the freeze dryer but it looks like it's just going to be blooming everywhere and very beautiful so that's exciting everything else in here is looking like it's doing well I mean so many of these tomato plants I was very worried about but they're not droopy they're all all spruced up 
We have had tons of rain the last two days. Not today though, so I will water these heavy this evening just because that's when I have my watering times. But even my tomatoes we've done along the edges have all perked up. I was really worried. I was really worried over here about my Amish paste tomatoes that I put around this arch. Uh, but believe it or not, these look so much better than they did. They really do. Um, I did pick the lower leaves off of basically all of these because they look so sad. Um, that one is looking kind of sad. That one has a yellow leaf there. I might end up picking that one off. Um, but they all, they all were looking bad and this is good compared to how they were. So I'm hoping that with, like that has a little arm there that I might end up plucking off. If I'm seeing them dried, shriveled, and yellow, I'm taking them off. Is that right? Is that wrong? I don't know. They're not looking like they were having trouble because they were diseased. It was just very much, I feel like, the time that they spent in the packaging and the time it took me to get them in the ground. Uh, by the time they got in the ground, they just, they were sad. They really wanted to be in the ground, so they finally are. Um, but I feel like I'm seeing improvements here in how they were looking. And so, growing our future meals, I am going to work on planting potatoes. Now I know, it's June, it's June. I'm breaking all the rules, it's June. Sorry, I need to check this water over here. I'm not convinced that it's turned off. Um, all right, okay, good. Anyway, just, you know, farm life problems that make you twitchy. Like, is that water really off how it needs to be? Anyway, I've done potatoes two other years. Okay, harvest. It's time for a win, right? And so, one of the things I was looking at, of course, ideal time would have been March to get them in the ground. We didn't really start working on this garden until April, and we had a lot of other infrastructure things to get in place. And I was not thinking of planting potatoes. Now, 2024 might be my year, where we have potatoes in the ground in March. If you hear a tractor, we got neighboring tractor driving by. Uh, anyway, I was reading, and I read this last year too, and it gave me confidence to go ahead and do it. In Virginia, what some folks do is once they get their first harvest, sorry, kids squealing with the water hose, other side of the property. Anyway, oh, which reminds me, <laughs> so many of you have asked, where's my pool? Why don't you see my pool? Well, it's not on this side. It's not on this side of the house where the garden and such is that you're seeing a lot more of right now. It's on the other side of the house. So, back to potatoes. That once they get their first harvest of potatoes, if they get them early enough that they can go ahead in Virginia and plant again, like in June, to squeeze in a second harvest of potatoes. So. I did that last year. I didn't get them planted until June. I didn't get anything in until June, pretty much. And so, hey, this year, at least we had stuff in the ground before June. Although, was that right with the, the tomatoes and the peppers? I don't know. But back to the potatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and get potatoes in the ground and we will see what happens. We will obviously be harvesting these in the fall and I'm doing it just as if, let's just say I had that first crop of potatoes in. It wasn't quite time to harvest, but I could go ahead and get another crop planted. So I would get two potato harvest. We're gonna see if we can get one. And some of our bags busted and we brought them up here, but I have 400 pounds of potatoes. They were only $5 for a 50 pound bag. I'm so excited. It was like 75% off super marked down when I called my feed store last week. And so I got 200 pounds, four of the Yukon Gold, and then I got 200 pounds of the Kinnebec. And we're just gonna have a go. And we will get potatoes. Last fall, I did get potatoes. I didn't film it. It probably would have been my most viral video. I don't know. I was out here, I was in my pajamas, harvesting all the potatoes. It was an absolute mess. This year, I'll record the harvest. I just, I wasn't very confident in what I was doing and what it would look like when it was done. It was a whole wheelbarrow or so full of potatoes. So one of my good local homesteading mama friends, last year, I'm pretty sure they harvested, 
like 1,200 pounds of potatoes. And she planted 200 pounds? Hmm, I have to look on her Instagram and see if that was right. But I don't even think I planted 200 pounds last year. I think I might only be planting the last two times I've done it. I think I've only been around 100 pounds or so. And so that's why this year, when I saw this deal, I was like, okay, I'm gonna plant 400 pounds. Maybe we'll end up with 800 pounds of potatoes when we're done. I also got sweet potato slips. I feel like I'm running out of room in this garden. <laughs> so what I'm going to do with the sweet potatoes is we are filling our different grow bags with our compost. So I'm gonna do sweet potatoes in the compost. And then I'm going to do potatoes. This is at least what my brain is telling me today, okay? This is called go with it gardening. I was going to do potatoes here and here. That's where a hose was leaking and over there. And I've read conflicting information about not planting potatoes and tomatoes together because they attract the same bugs and such. But I'm also working with the space that I have. And I don't know whether I have enough tomatoes, but I do have a lot. Hopefully they're going to do well. And I still, I have a friend who has an organic greenhouse and she still has a lot of tomatoes for sale. And so I might still like finish this one row. So I may finish that row there and then do one more row of our determinate tomatoes. But I was thinking I was gonna use the rest of this space. Yes. He was asking if these hens were all girls, yes. I was gonna use the rest of this space for potatoes. Let's give it a go. Now what I did just notice, we're over here with the bolting onions. Just watched a YouTube video on that and read a few articles. So we've went to Google Gardening University and we'll get back to this, but yeah. So this isn't getting full sun. Now I did pumpkins here last year, but I wanted to do the Three Sisters corn method here and from what I was reading, corn needs six hours a day of sunshine. So I don't know what's going to happen here. I don't know how this is gonna work out. And so maybe what I should do is plant my potatoes here. I wish I could hear your answers, but that would be a little cooler for them and not the direct sun. Hmm. Although I do have some corn planted, so everywhere there's a little yellow tab. Um, but then this is how, all the big um, huh? <laughs> this is how everything else is looking sunshine wise. My concern with the corn in this garden was that if I did corn over here, which was a thought I had, was again with the shade. Let me go see which way my, my shadow goes. <laughs> Maybe we'd be okay. Okay, I don't even know how to do the YouTube shadow test. Hi, I'm here. Shadows going to the side, shadows going in front of me. But I do have some room here. Maybe I could do three rows of corn. Thinking, thinking the gardening thoughts. So, in my Google University, what I was reading is that I could cut these bolted flowers off, so this is where it has decided to make onion seeds. I can cut this off. I could even cut the whole stock of it off, and it would, my onions would probably be okay for a few more weeks in the ground to give me time to harvest them, or I could go ahead and just harvest the whole thing. Um, but even if I cut these tips off, it would not restart this bulb growth again. But this is the most successful I've ever been with growing an onion, even though it bolted. So in the one video that I was watching, um, she was saying that, you know, these, these are still edible. I can use them now. Um, I think I'm going to pull up all my bolted ones and we will go ahead and chop all these up and put them through the freeze dryer. And I don't know if we're going to make an onion powder or just have freeze dried onions ready to go. But let's see how this one. Yeah, so these. <laughs> They're precious little little baby onions, but we're doing it, and I know we can eat the whole stock. Um, and I'm trying to see if I have any that haven't bolted. I think they've all bolted. Uh, from these, these are the ones 
that we planted my then 12, no, my 11 and 13 year old boys had to think before the birthdays, planted these when I had busted my back. Um, but then I'll be able to plant something else in this bed. Now I do have a lot of other onion starts in a lot of other beds. And so I'm going to really keep an eye on them so we don't have this bolting situation. But they're still usable. It's just, again, from my limited understanding, it's not like I'm going to be able to cure them and then have them last in my pantry for months and months. I need to pull them and use them now for the most part. I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, go ahead and pull them up. I'm trying to stay organized in my thoughts. I'm like, wait a minute, I was gonna do potatoes. I'm also working on corn. Maybe I shouldn't harvest all these onions at this exact moment, but if I harvest them, we can wash them this evening when we go inside to do some more food projects. We can wash them, and then even if they go in my fridge for a few days, they'll just need to be chopped to go through the freeze dryer. So. We we'll just have our cute little skinny onion harvest. Sorry, I had to go change a camera battery. I know what I was saying earlier. In reference to the potatoes and the tomatoes, even if I did end up having some of those close in closer proximity, my one friend told me, you know, they didn't think it was really any different than growing a tomato by a tomato because tomato plants attract the same, <laughs> the same problems that if you have potatoes by tomatoes, and they attract the same problems if you have a lot of tomato plants together. Everyone in the neighborhood's got the same problems, so they thought it would be okay. So we'll see how that works out. Just walking inside with my bolted onions. We can deal with it. Bolted onion surgery. And I'm listening now to an MI Gardener video on handling the rest of the onions. Oh, I should have gone with a bigger boat, huh? Definitely should have got a Mega Mama bowl for this. But that's okay. Whew. Definitely looks like a farm kitchen now. All right. goes on the to deal with later list. So there's the sweet potato slips that we need to plant. Also, mom lunch, toasted Ezekiel bread, and a pear. So there you go, we'll get back to you guys later. You will never believe what's for dinner. Look at this. What? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Brenner looks a lot like breakfast. Also, someone got out this bag of these sausages. I had got, this. they were in the freezer from Sharp Shopper, so I'm heating those up in the microwave. And then I'm probably going to have my eggs this evening on another Ezekiel bread muffin there. We got so much done outside. I will have to show you tomorrow so much, so much. Mind blown, <laughs> so much, so much planting. A bunch still needs to be done, and I had promised my kiddos that are home, I told you I was down a few kids, but I promised them that tomorrow would be a lake day. So this lake is technically in another state, but it's about 45 minutes to an hour away for us. And uh, we're gonna do that tomorrow. And the rest of my potatoes, we'll just have to sit there and like it until Friday. I think they will be okay. But again, so much. Got all the sweet potatoes planted. I got 100 to 150 pounds of potatoes planted. Got the rest of the corn planted. What else was it? Oh, I got watermelon planted. I got various pumpkins planted. It was just hours and hours and hours. I was shocked. My steps are only 67 
6,700, I wish thousands, yeah, 6,700 on my Apple Watch here, but, um, you know, some days, sometimes when I have big farming days, it's like 17,000 steps, but anyway, got so much good planting going. We will be processing those. That's gonna be on Friday. We must go down and attend to those mangoes. I just keep hitting to run them for two more hours, two more hours, but I think I've been doing I've been doing that a little too long now. So we need to address the mangoes tonight. And then I can defrost, put my freeze dryer through a defrost. Uh, definitely not. Those are gonna have to wait a day or two. It's okay, we'll get to it. We'll get there when we get there. Good morning, it is coffee o'clock. My plan is we are going to deal with these onions tonight. I also got some fantastic information. My friend over on Parsips and Persipony, <laughs> Parsips and Persipony, she messaged me this morning on Instagram and told me, because these are Egyptian walking onions, and she told me that they bolt real easy and what will happen is if I would have left them, they would have tipped over and these seeds would have replanted themselves. So she said these are like the easiest onions to grow and what she does is she takes all these tops off and she replants them like now and they will be the onions for next year. I feel like I'm, I'm seeing this vision in my head. She has been gardening and feeding her large family from her garden for years now. I think the New York Times even did an article on their family a few years ago about it. Something like, well, I'm, I'm not even gonna try to make up what the title was. It was very impressive. I'll say it was like $360 a month in groceries <laughs> because of their garden. Amazing. Okay, anywho, as far as these go, when we get home, we're, we're going to the lake today. Gotta give you the agenda. When we get home tonight, I want to process these, so we'll we'll wash them up and chop them down and get them in the harvest right since it defrosted since the mango. And I'm going to snip all these heads and when I have my next garden time, which is probably gonna be Sunday after church, it's Thursday now. And that's just how it goes. I get these windows of time and do all I possibly can. And then just realistically, because I'm also a working mama, I run a more than full-time business, Tomorrow I have a big course recording video day all day and then Saturday I'm filming a big super mega massive freezer cooking day which feeds my family but there is a business component. It is also work and I do have to pause life <laughs> and other things I have going on. It's just complicated. Okay. I will be able to garden again heavy which is all I want to do in my heart, mind, and soul right now. <laughs> Sunday after church. So Sunday afternoon into the evening, we will work in the garden, which for me, that is a day of rest. That is something I want to do. That is good for my soul. And that's what we will be doing on Sunday. And this is all of the organic mango I had got at my local John Henry General store. It was $1.99 for a whole tray. There were probably like 20 mangoes in the tray. It was so many mangoes. And I think we did five or six trays and we got them all in the harvest right. And like I say, just because I haven't been able to deal with them, I have hit the more dry time button a couple times yesterday. They were ready yesterday morning and I just kept them going through the day. And I didn't even take the time to put them in jars or seal them in mylar. Like last night when we brought the trays up, I had kids just eating. They probably ate a whole tray last night, which would make sense. There were five trays and I've got four bags and they just love this. Mm -hmm. And like I said, today is actually our first lake day of 2023. I make a point in the summer to have one or two lake days a week. We have probably four, I think there's more than that, but four lakes within a 45 minute to an hour radius that all have nice sandy beaches and beautiful water. One of these lakes I went to a lot as a kid starting at nine years old. Just really fun. So today is our first lake day of 2023. And I'm going to, I, I feel like if I just brought one thing of freeze dried mangoes, that wouldn't be enough. But I feel like if I brought two things of freeze dried mangoes, they're not gonna go through two, I don't know. We'll have evidence to tell. 
happy. I feel like they will definitely go through one and they will start to work on the second. So I'm not doing anything with these mangoes other than I'm gonna leave them on my counter. And I'm pretty sure they won't be with us next week. Even my two year old is like, mango, 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 just loves it. And we'll probably, uh, well, we'll take those pears with us to the lake. We'll do some simple sandwiches. I even have a bunch of PB&J un homemade Uncrustables in the freezer. Probably just wipe that out. Kids are ravenous when they're swimming all day. It's supposed to be 83 today, no rain, perfect day for it. Alrighty, lots in the works. Getting ready to go to the lake. Come on, sweetie. I need to water my flowers around the house. Check in and do some animal jobs. We even, we have some spilled potatoes on the porch. So this is where, don't mind the 60 year old porch falling apart. <laughs> this is where we had the potatoes stacked. We moved the bags, but one of the bags ripped. So we'll get those planted too. And I'm going to wear teenage son's clogs or clog, yeah, Crocs. Okay. So it's early yet. This is what the garden's looking like this morning. Of course, I, I noticed the sun everywhere on the property different times of day, but here we are. This morning yeehaw. looking at it. Yeehaw, that's right, Tobin, yeehaw. So this is some of the things we got done yesterday. Of course, kitty in the garden. Oh, kitty digging in the garden. Okay, let me, let me take you over here. It's like, where do we start? So much was done. So we got all of these bags filled yesterday with compost. These two bags, now these are not labeled yet. I did take a video for myself last night just as a reminder and I've left some seed packets around that we'll see. But right here, all potatoes, all potatoes. And then seven bags of, is that right? Two, four, six, seven. Okay, I did remember. Seven bags of sweet potatoes. Everything was heavily watered last night, and I'll do it again this evening when I get home. Now, here, we've got a lot of fun things happening. So these three bags here at the end are potatoes as well. I just, I'm putting potatoes everywhere. Um, and those look like potatoes, but they're dahlias. So anyway, these are potatoes. Now, I did, I did so many great things here. So this is the Big Max pumpkin from Baker Creek. My plan is, as I talk about all the pumpkins and all the pumpkin planting that I've done, I'm gonna have the vines could just come out this way, just take over this space. So we've got Big Max pumpkin, it'll go this way. Then we have these white pumpkins, that'll go this way. Over here I have, I'm just, I'm just calling them by colors. <laughs> The green pumpkin it can go out that way. That's okay. There's another white pumpkin from I think this is a white scallop And that's just mud on top. But anyway seeds from generations Again, it can go in the rows. I'm fine with that. These three here are sugar baby watermelons I have the one seed pack there again. I am going to go through and label them then over here we got this whole Lasagna garden situation uh, with corn everywhere. There's a little white. Nope, wrong color. Everywhere there is a yellow little stick in here is where I'm doing my three sisters gardening attempt. And so there's corn seeds in a square here all the way down. Once the corn gets to be about five to six inches, we will then come back and do pole beans around them. And once those pick up, then we will do probably a vining squash. I've seen it, again, per Google Gardening University, where mm -hmm. some folks have done pumpkins, some folks have done vining squash. I read some pros and cons of doing pumpkins, but I'll show you where I put my pumpkins. and. It's still, I don't know if it's gonna be a vining squash or not. Let me know what you have done. But what I did for my pumpkins, because I still wanted to do them, is I did pumpkins along here and then all the way down here. And again, with the idea, I mean, we got nothing but dirt going on here. So I'm just gonna train my pumpkins. I'm gonna take their vines and push them this way. Same thing with here. Instead of letting them vine into the corn, I'm just, they're just gonna vine out this way. You know, nothing but cats and farm life going on. The other animals are behind this fence over here. So 
unless the goats get out of the gate, you know, <laughs> that does happen. Uh, and even with a fence around my garden, a gate could be left open or knocked open and, you know, goats could get in the garden, things could happen. So if I'm going to fence in the garden, I just feel like it's not the right time to fence in the garden yet. Maybe my heart hasn't been broke enough yet. The garden area is still growing. Like, obviously, I've got those bags there. Um, I want to have at least that tree taken out, although that doesn't affect the shade during the day. It could open up more garden areas in this direction. So we'll see. We obviously have many more dead trees. I don't know that that tree is necessarily 100% dead. Getting the trees removed around the house, we have to get a crane and our tree guy had an injury and that's a whole other project. But I can see like even over in our other animal yard on behind this one, you know, I was looking at these last night, a lot of these trees uh, just need to be removed. Is that heavy? Yeah, I see. So I learned about this. I think they call it a, a handy hoe or a hidey hoe, something. Um, Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead and Ruth from Homesteading with the Zimmermans, they have these, this long handle detaches. And so they just scrub it around to like help get the little grass seed and stuff up. Um, and Tobin is, you're showing us how to use it, huh? Oh, it is heavy. You're doing a great job though. Are you a gardener? Gardener. Gardener. Mm -hmm. Gardener. Oh, yeah. You're getting it in that dirt, huh? Dirt. Dirt. Smart boy. Yes. Yeah? We need to go get our chicken eggs, don't we? So, anyway, yesterday, got the, rat, got the corn planted, all these other Daddy. seeds, all these bags done. Now, the bags were, Travis went yesterday and got, he can only get one scoop of the wood chips because that farmer that we get them from, just had a busy day and couldn't do any more than that. So Travis drove and got the one scoop. He's gonna get, it's gonna take a whole day next week and just get scoops all day. We still have our current load of compost that we're working with. We've been talking out our plan for in the fall because we have free leaves. <laughs> we have free leaves everywhere. And of course, we have free horse manure. We have chicken accessories. So just talking about him, he likes to mow the leaves to crunch them up, but then per on purpose composting them. Last year in these gardens, in these 18 raised beds or 20, maybe count the little ones, the leaves fell and we just left them there. And then we know, we've been discussing me pulling out the extra leaves. I actually had pulled out a lot. Um, I was still leaving a layer, but most of those are gone now too. So then over here we had, so another thing, um, I learned yesterday is that these are garlic scapes and that I need to cut those off, but I can still freeze dry them or use them in different ways. See the little nasturtiums coming up and that's lettuce we could be using. Anyway, so we need to go through and do that. I'll do that on my next gardening day. And then here where we pulled up the two beds of onions, I replanted potatoes in here. I've never done potatoes in raised beds but I did potatoes here. Now over here, I have a lot of zucchini and, or actually I think these are pole beans. Let's see, no, not pole beans. Oh uh, yeah, gray zucchini, okay. So I did some potatoes in here, but not, not too heavy, but I got some in. But what I learned about the onions, okay, so the onions yesterday were Egyptian walking onions. And my friend over from, I mentioned her earlier in the kitchen, pars parsnips and precipiti, she did a whole Instagram messenger education with me today on these onions. So when I was Googling my way through it yesterday, I was treating these Egyptian walking onions as all other onions, like these onions that I have here and here and here and then down into this bed. When I was reading about onions, I was reading about traditional bulbing onions that apparently, again, and my gardener, YouTube video university as well, apparently at some point I want to trim these to keep them from bulbing and to keep more energy going into the bulb. But with the Egyptian walking onions, I actually, so those are different. They don't get the massive bulb. And their heads, like I showed you, will produce these big seed pods and then bend over and replant themselves. And another Instagram message I got told me that that's what this other homestead family does with theirs. They just let it reseed themselves and then they will harvest the bulbs. 
So all is not lost. I still plan to next gardening day replant all of those onion seed head pods and I think I might do those down in the beds where I have even more zucchinis now and then see how we do letting those grow and becoming my Egyptian walking onion for next year but she was explaining to me they actually become a perennial onion where if I just leave them every year they will always reseed themselves even though they're not big bulbing onions the green is great they still get a little bulb they're not really a good storage onion but they're fantastic for fresh cooking and also the big thing I'm going to do with them is freeze dry them. So then over here we have, let's see, I went ahead and put some tomato cages around these tomatoes. I think moving my sprinkler around, I had knocked some over. I don't, I don't know if that's why they're leaning over or not, but I noticed last night some were leaning over and I've been trying to be as careful as possible when I move my sprinkler. So I won't totally discredit myself, but, but I have noticed these laying over. And so I put these cages around them to start giving them something to lean on. Um, this one here, get up, get up. Okay. So started to do that process. Also yesterday we did, I had my 12 year old do this. He did three rows of potatoes here. And tomorrow I want to take more hay and we're gonna cover this area. I still have, like I showed you, I think, I still have more room for tomatoes here and here. And so I wanna put hay on top tomorrow. And then, so that goes all the way up to here to still give us this walking path. And then here, I worked on last night doing four rows of potatoes that end about where I left that bag. And I plan on, I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow or not. Now I'm looking at my calendar and thinking, oh, I, I could switch my days. This is what happens when you work for yourself. I could go with the gardening inspiration now and flip some days. But anyway, tomorrow I want to do more potatoes here. And then I plan with, we got a bunch of round bales of hay from last year. And again, that hay's not tested. I don't know the farmer we got that from. Our other cow and lots of our goats have eaten that hay for a while. That hay is down in this garden already. And now I know about chemicals and hay. So, brain explode. Anyway, we're just thinking the best thoughts. We're just gonna pray over that hay for this year. Okay, so what I wanna do is take one of those bales and I need to ask Travis the best place. He did not want to garden over where those stumps are over there because he wants to work on getting those up but i know our summer projects and so many things coming that those stumps may not be until later this fall or next spring so i want i just want to ask him if we can roll the hay there and do potatoes there or it might be that we do the potatoes along the other side of this fence here but I'm going to do Ruth Stout where we just lay hay down, sprinkle some compost, and you don't even necessarily have to do that, but I have it. So hay, not a thick layer of compost like this, but hay, compost, potatoes, more hay on top, and make it as simple as that. And then my cabbage is doing things. Look, it's starting to cabbage. I'm excited about that. And then up here, my broccoli, as my one friend says, my broccoli is broccoli in. And there we got one. Look at this, it's so smart. Good job, broccoli. And, and we will, you know, once we have all of our systems in place, which we have been working on, I want to do a big fall and into winter garden too, as much as we can. So, we will be doing these again. I know that these are a cold weather crop, but again, in Virginia, like last night it was 47 degrees, you know? So that's why some of these things are still hanging in there. Uh, look at that. I'm so proud of it. So proud. And the mullen is looking nice this morning. Oh, and I had told my five-year-old and my eight-year-old that they could have these two red strawberries today. So, I'm gonna go ahead 
and bring those in for them this morning. Our first two strawberries. Nice job. Are you watering? Water. That's so nice. Water. Nice water. Yeah, water in the flowers. Okay, so keep feeling like this hat is flipping up. It's a new one. I gotta break it in. We won't get the sweaty garden ring on it. Maybe it'll be my going out hat for summer. Anyway, now that we've discussed hats, breakfast is going to be sausage and pears because I have two more bags of this sausage from Sharp Shopper that was in the freezer that we are going to eat and then we still have that case of pears that we're working through. So our lake food today is I have a whole tub of those Uncrustables, homemade Uncrustables from the freezer and then we're going to take a bunch of pears and we're going to take our freeze dried mango. I might also take some cheese sticks so there's our sausages that I'm gonna put in my little baby oven. And uh, because I'm sure friends will want to know, Travis has worked with Z-Line. We are waiting for them to schedule a repair person to come out to fix the big oven. So we're back to cooking in the baby oven, but at least they've heard us. It's under warranty. Things are moving, things happen. So we'll see. So today's June 1st and they're supposed to hatch on June 5th. So that actually means that tomorrow we take the other little top off of that water pot. In just a few more days, the eggs hatch. We just realized our incubator time is coming up. So we have our American breast flock in here. I put them in, and this is just dry erase, put them in on May 15th. They're supposed to hatch on June 5th. And I just said around June 5th because I got them going in the evening and I mean, you know, they could actually start coming on the 4th or it could be on the 6th. So within a day there. Um, anywho, they've been doing great from all I can tell. When I bought this incubator, there's this little red cap that's supposed to go on this side and you don't open that up until the last three days, I believe. And you keep this side filled with water. Mm -hmm. There's some other, a few small steps, and I'll look at my PDF on my phone for it. But anyway, of course, after our first hatching last year, we lost that cap. <laughs> so I have done several more hatchings, and I just put a little piece of duct tape over it. Everything generally works out in the end. So there we go, a few more days. And here's our big tub of Uncrustables that was brought up from the freezer. So. We're just gonna take the whole thing with us. So we had quite the surprise. I was just here pulling the second layer off the pears. I was getting other ones out of the top layer. Wee, but that's okay, pears for pigs. But I will go through and it looks like the ones along the edge here are fine. So I'll grab those and then the rest of these, pig food. I also have a family member who's keto for health reasons, doctor recommended, whole healthcare thing happening here. So anyway, I have some different deli meats and some cheese sticks as well going because they won't be able to have the sandwiches. Okay, so this is what I'm taking. Again, we might only go through one bag of pears. Uh, we might go through the whole thing and have a couple more. So I'm just gonna take it. It can always come back home with us. There's seven of us going for today. Um, even my almost 20 year old son, he's able to come with us today. So that will be a lot of fun. So we have been at the mountain lake all day. This is some great collection. Now when we go here soon, I want you to let them all out. The water's really nice and clear here. Hey, we are back and this is my loot from my friend Sarah who has her greenhouse business. These looked really cool. She gave me two of them. These are called Orange Accordandia, I believe you say it, but they're these look like huge peppers, almost that color, and they have all tons of little ridges, and these are indeterminate, but don't worry, we'll find a space. Then for the determinant, I got 15 more Romas. We got a couple different pepper varieties. Oh, the black, see, I think it's, I'm gonna say Black Beauty, but Purple Beauty peppers. We got, I think, 15 eggplants. That's another variety of eggplant. Let's see here, yeah, Black Beauty eggplant. 
And then what do I have here? Yes, another pepper. So just some more, some more fun things. I think I got 12 eggplants and 15 Roma's peppers and those other ones. So that was a nice little stop off on our way back from the lake. And it's evening now and I'm gonna get the hose to go and those eggplants are looking sad. So here's Travis's expert grilling tonight. Good morning, I'm going to use my little baby pot here. Oh, let's see, let's not turn the heat on yet. I've been outside doing my farming mama things this morning and I'm just gonna do some oatmeal this morning. Yay. Okay, we are getting the slow cooker activated for today. And so, what I am going to do is a close to homemade, homemade components, throw together Alfredo. Now I'm probably going to get, uh, maybe bring up another two more jars of the stew meat that we canned, and I'm going to let this cook on low in the slow cooker. And I'm also gonna add in some of this Alfredo. It is a canned Alfredo, but it's sugar-free, and I do have a couple jars of it to use up. And then the family can have it on regular organic noodles from Azure. Also, I have the Palmini noodles. I have two bags of the Liguidi and a can of it. So for myself, who's doing Trim Healthy Mama forever and ever, amen. So these are a gluten-free option. They're also on my little plan. So my different little autoimmune slash food things happening around here, this will be an option too. And these are very good. I like to boil them for a few minutes. But there's no weird taste with them or weird texture like there can be with the, the Zero Noodle brand that I've bought before. That's the Konjac noodles. I'll still eat those, but these are more appetizing, more palatable to other folks. Got our homemade strawberry oatmeal. Also, while I am eating my oatmeal, I am unboxing. I've got my MI Gardener shipment. So they had um, a promotion on dormant plants for perennial perennial gardens, and I ordered, I believe, their home their homestead package for several things. So that was ten of each of the different plants. And so here's some red raspberry heritage plants, and I will open it all up in depth later but lots of those in here I believe some other varieties in here I had just pulled out let's see where did you go I had gotten some elderberry plants these have little labels in them let's see yeah there's another elderberry and that probably okay here's a label this is a blueberry. Like I say, I do have some blueberry dissenters, but I have some who absolutely love blueberries. They gave me some little cards. Let's see what this is. Well, I'm not sure, so I'm gonna have to open it up. I want to get a lot of these planted in. We have a driveway circle, and we've started to put apple trees in there. We okay. did, love you, sweetie. We did um, four or five apple trees last year. And so I wanted to also get raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, elderberry, any kind of other berries going in that area. It's gonna be 90 today, but not until like three or four, so trying to work more this morning. I'm gonna do hay along where I did potatoes a few days ago. And then where my potatoes are going in here, I'm gonna do more of a Ruth South method. I mean, this is pure compost. I'm going to do a layer of hay, lay the rest of my potatoes, and then do hay on top. And then I did talk to Travis. We are going to do hay in our stump area because, again, his project list is deep and wide. 
and we're just not getting to the stumps right now while I'm growing potatoes. So we're gonna do the potatoes over there as well in the hay. Okay, so I'll take you around. Super productive day also. I've got two different garden seats now. That's another one that came today. We got potatoes, we got hay down, and then potatoes there, and then hay on top, Ruth Stout method. And then these that we planted directly in the compost, we still covered the top with hay. And then over here, my 12 year old had done three rows of potatoes yesterday or the day before, and we covered those with hay. I'm going to do bush beans down the middle of those rows. Also, my eight year old planted out those, uh, the tomatoes at the end there. I think we did 15 more Roma plants. And then I got the eggplant from there. We got eggplant all the way up here. Everything needs a good drink of water, but middle of the day right now, I think it's 90 today. We got all the tomato cages that we have out. I think I counted, I need 22 more or we'll stake them. Just this is for the determinate tomatoes. Then I did eggplant here. I'm going to continue to fill out this area. I did plant one of those accordion tomatoes there and I did another one there where I had a marigold die. And I know there's more. Oh, over on one of the arches where I still didn't see anything come up yet, a friend of mine gave me four cantaloupe plants and then one cucumber. So I put the cucumber by where I had some other cucumbers on an arch and I added some cantaloupes out there. And then here, this whole big section. So Travis brought his scoop and rolled out a cattle bale of hay that we had. And then Liam helped me. We covered this whole thing. I'm thinking how many, I think maybe 150 pounds of potatoes or so. And we just did this extra part and then we just covered the whole tops with hay. I still have, I'm looking over here, but in that wheelbarrow up there, I have one more 50 pound bag. So I'm thinking tomorrow, we're just gonna need to extend this. And I know there's shade now, but it's four. This has been getting Blair and Sun all day. We'll do another row here and do another 50 pounds. And yeah, plant potatoes and like it, right? So here's how the garden's looking now. It is, when I'm filming this, it is June 2nd. And one day, large family meals potential. We are going to look at a cow this afternoon. She would be, I mean, if she works out, you know, me talking excitedly about going to look at cows, it's kind of like, I don't know, when someone's going to look at a house or going to look at a car, you don't know which one will work out. This one is a year. She can be bred via AI within about two to four months, they said. She's 48 inches at the withers. I've talked to you about her. You're listening again though, thank you. An experienced homestead friend of mine who really likes mid-sized jerseys as well told me that if I breed her in about two months, that should help keep her growth in the mid-size range uh, if I don't want her to get too much bigger because her body will then shift to growing a baby. Okay, so I wanna look at her. She is halter trained and lead trained. Now I've heard from Kate over on Venison for Dinner that she does not recommend getting a cow and then training it to milk. She suggests getting a cow that's already in milk. And I went, by the way, I'm drinking a ginger ale zevia. Uh, she suggest, suggest, and this did work well with my first dairy goat, to get one that's already in milk, already milking, and that cow will teach me, will teach you. So that still might happen. It's just, it's a little slim pickings with these Jersey and these Jersey options. So this year old Jersey we're gonna go see, it's from a long line of A2A2 Jerseys. The owner says, you know, her mama gave five to six gallons of milk a day. Just phenomenal genetics and all those good things. So I wanna go look at her and see how I feel because the cow I went and saw last weekend, she was good, but I just didn't have all the right, all the right feelings. So we're just gonna go see how this feels. <laughs> uh, I'm taking Travis and the kids, and then what are we doing? Well, we're gonna get that done. I need to get cleaned up. I've been in the garden all day, and I'm going to 
eat a snack, get a shower, feed my family dinner, because I didn't have lunch. Then we're gonna go see this. I'm gonna go see a man about a cow and go from there. And I haven't forgot about those onions that are still waiting for me to deal with them. Okay, we're almost there. We're going to see a man about a cow. Well, we saw the cow and I done did it. We went ahead and bought her. They're gonna hold her for me. I paid them extra to hold her for me for a couple weeks while we get a few more projects done here. And I also have a business trip coming up to another state for a few days. So when I get back from that, we will bring her and then there won't be any travel and interruptions. So we can really focus on getting to know her and her getting to know us. And this, this is not her, but this is another cow in her family line and that's my 12 year old standing beside her and that's one that's grown but still mid-size and Liam is standing down a hill there just a little bit so I just took some pictures to show what she looks like but this is her and that's Liam I told him to stand there there's a bet yeah that's a good one I still feel like he might be a little bit downhill but there she is there she is Hello, her name right now is Hazel. Whoop, whoop, nothing there. Okay, so anyway, there she is. We did it, I felt good about it. I walked her, we scratched her a lot, petted her head. She was a real good price. She was a Jersey in our area. I didn't have to wait on a waiting list for her <laughs> or any of that. So she seems like a real nice girl and we'll get to know her. And then in a couple months, we can have her bread and go from there. Okay, so this was a green tea kombucha, so we got that bottled up. I got my scobies over here, and we grew another one. So I'm gonna get a second container going. And then over here I have dinner. This, uh, these are the, uh, the gluten-free noodles here, and then these are the palmini noodles, and then in here it's our beef alfredo. Sorry, the, the dryer's really working hard tonight. I had added it a little gluten-free thickener to this here. That's what I use from Bob's Bread Mill. And I thicken this up and we're gonna have this over the gluten-free noodles or the palmini noodles. Good morning again, it is coffee o'clock. I am going to get two things of kombucha going this morning using black tea this time where the bottles I showed you yesterday was my first time using green tea. I've been doing the kombucha these last, what has it been, year or two with the black tea mainly so can't wait to try it this other way so the sun is coming up here we're gonna get going with of course all kinds of projects today it is Saturday all right so Mud boots, garden boots in full effect. I'm doing some morning watering today, just seeing if I can work this time into my Bible and coffee time if I sit outside and then every couple minutes, every five to ten minutes or so, it depends on where I'm watering, move my sprinkler around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm giving that a shot. And I do have my windbreaker on this morning because I don't know, it's a little chilly, I don't know. Is it 62 in the shade? <laughs> I'm not sure, but it's early and I don't think it's quite seven yet. And so I got my, got my windbreaker on this morning a bit. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. 
The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands formed the dry land too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. So thanks again, friends, for hanging out with me this week and for working on our future food and also dealing with our current food with our large family meals and our homestead adventures for 2023. I will see you very soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye.